Hi, dear folks. Thanks for joining this training. We're going to be taking a look today at Microbiology Labs Online. There are several features that are already available in Mastering that I think will help you quite a lot. Let's have a very quick overview so you'll have an understanding of what we'll be covering with the rest of this video. We'll begin with safety in the microbiology lab. There's an awesome assignment that covers that. My students are not allowed in my face-to-face -face lab until they've completed this assignment. Then the absolutely wonderful micro lab tutors that are very detailed and let the students uh, respond and show their understanding with some in-depth active assignments. Micro lab practical staining. This one covers all of the major stain types you're likely to be doing with your students. Micro lab practical biochemical test. If there is a biochemical test that you do in your face to face lab, I'm going to bet that it is likely very well covered here in this series of assignments. Pre lab quiz with lab technique videos. Again, illustrating how to do very common lab techniques that almost certainly are going to be representative of what you cover in your labs. And then finally, post lab quizzes to show that students understand how to interpret results in your microbiology lab. And with that, let's stop looking at slides and actually dive into mastering. I want to start here on the instructor homepage, and what I don't want to do yet is teach you how to build an assignment. Instead, I want to begin by taking you right into the item library where things exist that we can assign. So I want to show you how to find these first, and then later I'll show you how to assign them. We're going to begin by clicking Instructor Tools here in the left-hand menu, and from there I'm going to go into the item library. This is just a big chapter-by-chapter -chapter library of things that you can assign. Now I happen to be in the Tortora Funken case textbook, but that really doesn't matter here. I'm not really worried at this moment about chapters in my textbook. There's some good stuff here for your particular textbook. You might want to particularly look at interactive microbiology and the chapter pull-down. But I really don't even want to focus on the chapters of this textbook. Instead, what I want to do is change the book source. I want to actually leave my textbook and go to something you're going to have no matter what micro textbook you have. And that is in the textbook drop-down, Pearson Microbiology Lab. Let's open that and we're going to find most of the great stuff we want to talk about today right in here. Now, I'm going to scroll through this list of 140 items and show you some of those favorite things we were looking at a moment ago. Right there at the top, you can see Micro Lab Practical Acid Fast Stain. So, Acid Fast, you'll also, of course, see all the other stains you would expect. We also see Biochemical Test, Carb Fermentation, Catalase Test, Decarboxylase Test, EMB Auger. Those are all listed under Micro Lab Practical Items that you can study and assign to your students. We're going to keep on scrolling through this nice long list until we find some of my favorites that I actually have stars by, so I'm going to speed past, and there they are. Some of my favorites, Micro Lab Tutor, Aseptic Transfer, ELISA, Gram Stain, Identifying Unknowns. Now, you didn't expect that one, but it's right there. Multitest System, API 20E, PCR. Quantifying bacteria with serial dilution and pore plates. There's really some great stuff in here. Let's pause for a second. There it is. Safety in the microbiology lab. I don't even let my students in my face-to-face -face lab until that one is done. It's always assigned very early in my semester. Streak plate technique. Survey of protozoa. Use and application of the microscope. Use an application of acid fast stain so your students will truly learn how to do many of the techniques you need them to do in your lab. Now, I put a little star by those because I wanted to very quickly be able to find those micro lab tutors and point them out to you. And you can do that yourself if you like to. Make anything that you really like a starred item so it's very easy to find there. I'm going to go back up to the top and here in my... Uh, top menu, I'm going to tag star, and that's going to bring up everything that I've pre-favorited, which in my case right here is those micro lab tutors. I'm going to undo that, and now we can see that whole list of things we were looking at before. Now, if you quickly want to find 
pre and post lab items. I'm going to tag pre lab right there. And here you can see some of those things that I mentioned when we were looking at the slides. Pre lab quiz with lab technique video, acid fast staining, carbohydrate catabolism, compound microscope, differential and selective media, disc diffusion assays. Many of you probably do that with antibiotics. ELISA, gram stain, hydrogen sulfide production, litmus milk reactions. Again, these are all pre-lab with a video and a quiz. Respiration, serial dilution, simple staining, smear prep. How many times have you had to remind students that they need to heat treat that smear? Structural stains, AIMS test, bacterial transformation, disinfectants and antiseptics, antimicrobial drugs, examination of living microbes, gastrointestinal bacteria, IMVIC, membrane filter technique, microbes in the soil, microbes in the water multi-tube, physical agents of control like heat, electromagnetic radiation, transfer of bacteria and urease. Let's head back up to our filters and uncheck pre and look at post-lab stuff. Here, we're looking at their ability to interpret things like lipase production, acid fast staining, bacterial transformation, carbohydrate catabolism, disinfectants and antiseptics, agents of control, chemotherapeutic agents and antimicrobial drugs, compound microscopes, differential selective media, disc diffusion assays, ELISA examining live microbes, gastrointestinal bacteria, and gram stains. I think you're finding what I had promised early on, a very robust covering of topics you would want to consider in your lab. Let's go back and clear some of these filters and begin to take a look at some of these items now. Let's start with a real workhorse of most of our microbiology labs, biochemical test. We have a lot of these here as assignables. Simmons citrate is one of my favorites. We'll look at one of three questions that are assignable. This one actually has a pair of different results, specimen A and specimen B, and your students are asked to select all appropriate answers here uh, based on the behavior of organism A and organism B on this media. Uh, I'm going to close that, and you can take a quick look at all of the biochemical tests that are available here. I'm not going to read them all, but you get sim, some in citrate, starch, sucrose fermentation, TSB with pigmented bacteria, triple sugar iron, urea test, Volks proskauer uh, lots of those. So they're here. They're all kind of set up like that, showing students the results and asking them to interpret. Now, moving on from biochemical test, another big player in your lab is microscopy. So we have a few things that really address that quite nicely. Some staining, gram stain, spore stain, negative stains. So let's take a look at one of those. In this one, we have a gram stain, and the students are asked to do some interpretation. Based on what they see in this image, they should select all of the answers that really appropriately describe the specimen. And of course, your students really can't do anything microscopically until they fully understand their microscope. As you would expect, we have a whole series of gram stain representations for students to interpret. One tool I really love are these pre-lab quizzes with lab technique videos. I'm not going to open all of these, but I just want to scroll through the list and let you see the variety here. Acid fast staining, carbohydrate catabolism, compound microscopes, selective and differential media, disc diffusion assays, ELISA, gram stain, hydrogen sulfide production, negative staining, respiration, serial dilutions, simple staining, smear prep, structural stains, writing a lab report, what a concept. Let me open one of these so you can see how they're laid out. I'm going to open smear preparation, which of course is the beginning of all good staining. As we take a look at the format here, we have a video on the left for your students to watch. And then I'm going to scroll on the right. We have one, two, three, four, five, six questions to be sure they really understand what they learned in the video they watched. Let's open the video. Prior to staining bacteria for viewing under the microscope, a bacterial smear must be made. To make a microscope stain of bacteria, the bacteria must be placed on the slide in a thin smear. Smears are prepared differently for solid and liquid cultures. Begin by cleaning each slide. 
Put some cleanser on your finger and then spread the cleanser across the slides. Rinse the slides with water to remove the cleanser and blot the slides dry. Label each slide with the I don't need to show you the entire video. I think you probably are very well aware how to make a smear, but I uh, thought you wanted to see what that looks like. And that is the Lab Technique video for pre-lab. And I absolutely adore these. My students watch those. How many times have you re-explained how to make a smear? They've got to be sure they flame that before they try the stain. I love these. It helps me from re-explaining things more times than I care to. Now let me take you back to probably my very favorite of the lab tools available. That is Micro Lab Tutors. And I'm going to start with the one that I've loved for a long time, aseptic transfer of bacteria. Let's open this. Now you're likely getting used to this format. We've got a training video at the top followed by questions, but what I really like about this is we actually have some very interactive questions along the way. This part C, for instance, has students arranging the steps. So we probably first want to attach the burner and then possibly adjust an air supply. Maybe do a little bit of turning on of the gas, lighting the burner, heating the loop, cooling the loop, and then submit that and see if we're good. And I actually had an issue that was there. We might want to uh, adjust the air supply after lighting the burner. So we'll rearrange those two. And you can see that your students are actually getting some good feedback when they make some errors. This one I really do love, and I love thinking back to my own times in the micro lab, especially early in the semester where you have to just really watch student techniques and make sure they're good. This part D, this video says the student is improperly sterilizing an inoculating loop. What is their mistake? And we've got some possible replies at the bottom. Let's watch this. Many of you have seen this particular error time and time again. Let's just watch this really short video. It's about four seconds long. I'll play the whole thing for you. Yeah, we've all seen that error more times than we care to count. And this is the Microlab Tutor's way of checking that. We move on. We have more questions, more questions. Here's another video check to make sure they really understood. And yet another in that same vein. So I think you can see these are really quite robust in making sure your students really understand these key concepts like aseptic transfer. Now, I can't finish out this training without showing you something I know you want to see. You've seen it. I know you've seen it. I know you've wondered. Identification of unknown bacteria. How in the world are we going to address that? Yes, it's a new item. Let me open it. I'm not going to walk through the entire thing but I certainly want to give you a taste of what this is like. We have a video. Please take the time to watch that. I will open it briefly and let you see what this looks like, but I'm not going to play it all. Identification of unknown bacterial cultures is one of the major responsibilities of microbiologists. Samples of blood, tissue, food, water, and cosmetics are examined daily in laboratories around the world. Such identification requires a series of tests. Results from these tests are recorded in a results table in a notebook. The observation column is where you record what you actually see for the test, whereas the interpretation column states what that observation means. The test performed in this lab may differ from those used in your own lab. Follow your instructor's procedure. Once the tests are performed and results recorded, the actual identification is done by comparing the results to an ID matrix. An ID matrix lists the characteristic results for several bacterial species. We'll stop there and take a look at the rest of this assignable. Now, as I said, I'm not going to work through the whole thing, but I do want to show you some of the things your students have to deal with here. First off, do they understand some basics? Gram stain, reaction, observation. Gram negative is interpretation, so 
that's probably going to be red. Gramstone morphology rod interpretation. We'll call that bacilli. So your students are going to continue to fill out this matrix to show you they understand the terms. Here we have an interpretation based on the results of the gram stain and the ID matrix below, which of the following microbes could this possibly be? So they get to interpret the gram stain, look at the matrix, and decide based on what they see whether they might have E. coli, Staph aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, or Bacillus cereus. I think I've figured that one out already myself. Let's scroll on down. Here's another matrix, and this is a fun one. We actually get to look at these results and decide which is consistent or not consistent with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Maybe gram stain is there. And then maybe your students can make some errors along the way whenever they decide if these test results are consistent or not consistent with an organism being Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Spoiler, I just started grabbing and dragging there. Here, we've got another interpretation of some fermentation tubes of an unknown. And based on these results, what are we likely dealing with? Staph aureus, E. coli, Pseudomonas, Proteus vulgaris, or Mycloideus. Another matrix, and yet another determination. And that follows. And I think you can kind of see the pattern here. While this does not completely replace your students doing an unknown uh, project in your lab. It's not half bad. Um, certainly it's great for if you're prepping students for a real lab to give them some practice, or if you're in the middle of a pandemic, it's not a bad little substitute. Now I've shown you some things that I think you might like to use with your class. Let's actually get these assigned now. We're going to go back out to the main menu and the course homepage. And from that course homepage, I want you to click on Create Assignment. Let's now create a new assignment from scratch, which basically means you're picking from that lovely list I just showed you. Let's call this one. Oh, let's begin with the big one. Unknowns. I'll hit uh, the second step in this workflow, which is items. We want to go back to that same item library I just showed you. And remember, we need to change the book source to Pearson Microbiology Lab. And the next thing I want to do is I want to scroll down and find that unknown assignment that I thought so highly of just a moment ago. And right there, it started, it's new. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to add that to an assignment and hit Save. And I have just built my first assignment. If I go back to my course home, I'll find that ready to go on my calendar. Here's a little spoiler alert, by the way, and maybe the best news of all. I've actually got all of these turned into assignments for you. And I'll show you how to get this course copied into your own account as soon as we get past putting this on the calendar for my students. So there's our unknown. I'm going to drop that and hit save. And now that assignment is due for my students on the 27th. Now, how do you get this set of assignments already made for yourself. You need to find yourself back here on the Pearson portal by logging into Mastering and there you want to click on Create Copy Course. From here you need to simply paste in the magic course ID. That course ID would be Austin 94687. You see it floating here, you might want to write that down. I'm going to hit the magnifying glass to search for that. And I see this. Now, that says Tortora Micro Labs. If you're using another author's textbook, that's perfectly fine. It makes no difference if you're using Tortora or any of our other textbooks. This will work great for you. All you need to do is copy this, and then you can copy into your course. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do that. Don't worry. We're going to hit Select. You can make this an instructor use course, which is perfectly fine. All you want this for is a source to copy from. I'm going to call this Great Lab Stuff. That's what I'm going to call it myself. 
Uh, since I made this an instructor course, I don't really need to worry about copying the dates. If you want to click this so other people can share it, knock yourself out, please share this video. I'm going to hit Create Course, and I'll go back to my courses, and it's going to take a little while for that to build. Right now, that's nice and gray. Don't worry about that. It'll turn a color once it's done. All we want to do at this point is to go into your course. So I'll go into another course of mine, and I'll show you how to get these assignments into your course. What I want to do is click Create Assignment, copy assignments from one of my courses, and now let's toggle open this list of assignments. That thing called Tortora Micro Labs, pick that. And here are all of those awesome assignments you wanted. So just come to the top, hit select for all of those, and come down to the bottom and hit continue. Now I'm not going to do that because this course actually already has all of those in there. But that will get you inside your own microbiology class all of these awesome assignments ready to go, ready to assign. They're there, they're waiting for you, and you can have them today. Thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful.